Well, meanwhile, more bleak news from the United States. Two thirds of young Americans between 18 and 24 believe that Jews as a class are oppressors and should be treated as oppressors. That's according to a new poll conducted by Harris Insights and Analytics and Harvard University. The poll also found that 51% of that age group believe that the long term answer to the conflict is for Israel to be ended and given to Hamas and the Palestinians. Generally, though, on a brighter note, bipartisan support for Israel among Americans is high. 63% of Democrats and 71% of Republicans believe that the United States is right to support Israel in its war against Hamas. Well, joining me now, Isabella Tabarovsky is the senior advisor at the Kennan Institute and the Wilson Center and a fellow at the Jerusalem Center for Public Affairs. Thank you very much for being with us. It's good to be here. And Isabel, you're, you're an expert in anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism in the Soviet Union. Do you see any similarities um, with that and with what is now happening in the United States? Well, the similarities are extraordinary. Uh, we see them in the rhetoric that the anti-Israel protesters use. It's the rhetoric that brands Israel as an imperialist, settler, colonialist, uh, genocidal, terrorist, fascist, racist, apartheid state that's engaged in genocide, that's branding Zionism in the same kind of uh, terms that's calling Zionists liars and manipulators and says that Zionists own all of the politicians and bankers and media people in the US. This is rhetoric that we heard in the Soviet Union going back to 1967 and onward. It was a massive part of Soviet international propaganda for 25 years. And it's really extraordinary to see it being resurrected on American campuses and in American streets today. And of course, uh, the Soviet Union uh, collapsed. It is no more. Um, but this is kind of an enduring legacy, isn't it? Well, that's right. You know, to the point where some people are starting to question whether, you know, whether the Soviet Union really, in fact, lost the Cold War, because there is some intellectual legacy, propagandistic kind of legacy that endures. And the the one way that to think of it is that these ideas, the anti-Zionist ideas, the anti-Israel ideas, became part of the global left already in the 70s and 80s under the Soviet influence. You can see it from tracking some of the publications, as I have done over the last uh, several years. And so it continued. It just it remained on the fringes, especially after the collapse of the USSR. And then at some point, it begins to move into the center under the influence of multiple trends and forces. And here we are hearing the very same things. You know, and I was I was born in the Soviet Union, and many Soviet Jews who are of my generation will say that they're having an incredible deja vu. It, precisely the kind of rhetoric and the kind of attitudes that they we all fled. Uh, are back in America again. And, and, and chillingly, it also has echoes of what happened in Nazi Germany, of course, um, when uh, Jewish students and professors, uh, Jewish teachers were, were barred uh, fr from their uh, studies. Um, and also, um, what comes to mind is the, the Durban conference, of course, when the anti-Zionism is, uh, when the Zionism is racism uh, resolution was passed, and the, the UN chief at the time was a uh, a former Nazi, wasn't he? Kurt Waldheim. I mean, these ideas are really coming back to the fore, aren't they? Well, that's right. And what's interesting about it is, of course, before, and I think part of the reason we're all so uh, surprised or so many people are so surprised and shocked by it is that for many decades after World War II, the thought was that the main danger for the Jews comes from the right. Because the Nazi, you know, Nazi ideology is a far-right extremist ideology that today it's, it, it lives in the neo-Nazi circles. The anti-Zionist ideology appears to be coming from the left, from the progressive forces, and it's a real turnaround for many people. They don't understand how it can happen that all of a sudden the danger for the Jews comes from the left. But of course, there's actually, if you know history, there isn't that much of a surprise. Uh, it's just that most people don't actually know this history. Yeah, anti-Semitism takes on different forms and, and guises over the century, doesn't it, from from the Middle Ages and, and all throughout history. I mean, this does, though, now represent a demographic time bomb for Israel, doesn't it? Uh, what can be done about it? 
Well, look, I mean, that is really the question that all of us uh, have to think about. I'm afraid that there are no easy solutions because I, I think that what we're seeing is a result of uh, education uh, in, in American universities and also increasingly in uh, in schools, pre-university, K through 12, as it's called. And this is related to the ideology that has arisen for which there isn't really a single term, but it's some kind of a combination of neo-Marxist, post-colonial studies, which and, and very much based on identity, assigning hard identity and then dividing the world based on these identities. And so based on this ideology, Jews are now part of the uh, white oppressor class. And based on that, and we've seen this over and over again, that you know, another part of this ideology is the so-called DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion, which sounds really, really great, right? That's what's so deceptive and hard uh, with it, is that everybody wants diversity and everybody wants inclusion, except that the name is deceptive. And one of the things that this ideology is known for is to target Jews as representatives of the oppressed classes and therefore you know, there, there are people that we need to to dissenter to use the the new term, uh, and so yeah, this is. It seems that we have a whole generation of people who have now been brought up in this way. So we need to be looking at uh, at the educational, at the curriculum in schools, universities, and I'm afraid that it's not going to be very quick. All right, Isabella Tabarovsky, thank you very much. Great to talk to you as always. Thank you.